Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Some educational ideas have such an impact that they are internationally recognized. We have a look at some projects which hit the headlines to see what difference they made on the ground. Many children miss out on education in Indonesia, but Muhammad Iman Osman not only managed to complete his education, but then put it to use serving his community. The Indonesian president has named him as a young leader and he's won several international awards. We met him to find out more. In a small village near Bandar Lampung in Indonesia, 22-year-old Muhammad Iman Usman visits a class led by his organization, which runs community development programs. Like some of the children he grew up with, many of these youngsters don't attend school. Like I always believed since I was kid, I always believed that if I want to change my my life and my family's life, I need education. Otherwise, I'll be in the same path like my parents. Um, I'll be stay in my hometown and, and never see the world, basically. Education uh, is important. So it's not simply just about um, getting a job. It's not simply about reducing the number and improving the country's economy or whatever. But more importantly, it's, just, it's something very personal for every single person, you know. Aged just 10, Iman set up a library in his hometown for family and friends. From this early start, he created other community education programs and ultimately nationwide projects. This workshop is one of many his organization, Indonesian Future Leaders, runs to help students and activists launch their own projects. There's nothing that makes me more excited about than uh, giving back to people, than getting involved with people directly. Mohammed's efforts haven't gone unnoticed. In 2008, the Indonesian president bestowed the title Indonesian Young Leader on him. He's won numerous other awards for his work from organizations around the world. Recently, he was selected by the World Innovation Summit for Education to join its prestigious learner program. But the accolades haven't turned his head. He remains a dedicated student and youth leader. As an activist, I was very fortunate, uh, fortunate to get noticed, not only by uh, media, but also by organizations and even like leaders, uh, not only in Indonesia, but also all over the world. And these awards provide an opportunity for me to actually to, to speak up about my ideas and more importantly about the issues that, I, that I'm concerning about and raising sort of like a awareness from people at a larger scale. I believe that education is a key to shape the future not only for the country, but also for the people in general. Providing access to technology for underprivileged children is one thing. What happens if you go one step further and teach them coding so they can develop their own apps and build websites? We go to Ireland to find out. Nine a.m. on Saturday, and the Irish city of Cork is slowly coming to life. In the nearby suburb of Ballinconlig, eleven-year-old Alan is busy working on a project for his local free computer coding club, Coder Dojo. Uh, right now, I'm working on a, a, a tree protector game. Uh, but it's an environmental game uh, that is it's downloadable right now. Uh, but uh, it's, it's still under development. Uh, one of the main differences of how Coda Dojo teaches com computers the normal school is the way that uh, you're not forced to do the same thing as the mentor. You can, you can learn whatever you feel like doing as long as someone there knows it or you find it online and you can help others learn it. Uh, but in school, it's very linear and you, you have to, to do what the teacher says. For Alan's mother, Galina, Coder Dojo offers her peace of mind that her children are learning to code in a safe environment. I was one of these parents. I was so concerned. I, 
I didn't have internet, um, I didn't allow them to play something online. I was so concerned and I can't stop them learning. So I realized that I have, fi have to find somebody that understands more than me. So to guide them and to give them the proper way of learning. Because uh, it's a very dangerous place, the bedroom, and to learn on your own from Just somebody you don't know. Yes. And this is the only way I could feel safe. You have so much to learn. At Kuro Dojo, young people from 5 to 17 can learn how to code, develop websites, apps, programs and games. In three years, the organization has helped establish over 100 dojos in Ireland and a further 200 dojos offering free coding classes worldwide. We use a pedagogical system that really comes from martial arts. Um, you know, the, the, the dojo, actually in Kota Dojo, refers to the experiential learning that you would see in karate or kendo. And it's about, you know, when you, when you learn something, you pass it on. You need a, a small amount of structure, and the fewer rules you have, the better. And we have one rule, be cool. While Kodo Dojo is helping children like Alan to excel in computer programming, it's also a club very much about fun and friendship. Uh, one of the most important things that have uh, happened to me uh, in Kodo Dojo was um, the fact that I'm usually not very social. Uh, well, I wasn't very so social before Kodo Dojo. But ever since Kodo Dojo, I've found a bunch more friends. And from there, I've learned how to get more social. And uh, my family have noticed that very greatly. So we're all happier in that way. Kodo Dojo has its own platforms in more than 30 countries. They've just signed a partnership with the US State Department to roll out dojos all across Africa. Pop star Shakira is famous for her music, but there's another side to her work. She's a staunch advocate of education, especially for the underprivileged in Latin America and particularly in her home country, Colombia. Let's take a look. Shakira is no stranger to shaking things up. Now she's doing it on an altogether different stage. The Latin diva is also an ambassador for education. In February, she opened a new school in one of the poorest areas of the Colombian city of Cartagena, Lomas del Peye. It's not the first initiative of this kind she's been involved with. Working with the NGO Pies del Scalzos, she promotes learning for all children in Colombia and other countries. My dream is to continue building schools that offer quality education to all children in Colombia. In this way, I hope that there won't be any child in this country and beyond who doesn't enjoy the fundamental right to education. That belongs to everyone from birth. When her 1995 album Pies Descalzos or Bare Feet became a smash hit worldwide, Shakira wanted to give something back. She created a foundation under the same name to give less fortunate children a fair chance in education. It built its first school in 2003 in the town of Quidbo. Since then, six others have been opened around the country. When we talk about education in our foundation, we talk about equality and not quality. All children, boys and girls, have the same rights. We know that education, we're sure of this, breaks the vicious cycle of poverty. With information, education, you can change your life. Now, thanks to Shakira's foundation, the children of Lomas del Peje are getting a fair chance to change their lives. And finally, we'd love getting feedback, so don't hesitate to drop us a line via our social media pages about any unusual ideas you've come across in the world of education. Goodbye for this week. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.